Welcome to Black Fridays. What's going on, y'all? It's Josiah, your success consultant. And in today's topic, we're going to discuss Barbecue Betty, mental illness, and the attack on Black America. So I'm sure that many of you have watched the infamous video that's now got millions of views around the world about the terrified young woman in Oakland, California, that was not comfortable with seeing brothers having a good time barbecuing. Why is it that our presence offends so many people? Why is it that we are so intimidating? You know, all the brothers are trying to do is grill and enjoy themselves, but for whatever reason, we come across as a threat. So as always, I wanna give you all the real. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel because I got three key points that I wanna drop on you on today's video. So I don't know if you've been hiding under a rock or if you're one of those black people that likes to pretend that no problems exist, but there are a lot of people that don't like us being here, okay? There's a lot of people that'll be like, oh, you gotta go back to Africa, and oh, you know, this is our country, and this and that. So much for the land of the free and the home of the brave. This society is filled with people that do not want to see us win, make it, or have a good time. And I'm not saying that everybody is out to get you. I'm not saying that everybody's trying to gun you down. But having a certain consciousness that you are a target in this society is very important. Because if you go through life with blinders on, it's only but so long before you get that Negro wake-up call. Now, if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, y'all got a YouTube Paul Mooney's Negro wake-up call, all right? So, one of the things that always strikes me about these situations is that whenever it's a certain demographic of people that are stirring up issues within our country you always tend to notice that there is a certain label and a certain title put on those issues. It always manages to be an issue of a mental illness. Have you ever noticed that? Like you could see a brother do something like totally off the wall, going far left. And we don't go halfway as crazy as other folks do, but you quick to call us a thug, gangsters, hoodlums, a terror to society but yet you've got people in this country that have caused more hell in the United States than half of the people all across the world that are being bombed relentlessly. And we never call them a terrorist. We never call them a threat to society. All we look back and say is, oh, poor person, poor Becky, Look at their mental illness. Now, here's the question that I have. Because I want to be a fair man, I understand that in a world, any country built on terrorism, it is possible that there are certain mental plagues that really gets the best of the average person in society. I could get with that. But here's my question. Why is it that we never get the benefit of the doubt as being regarded as going through the same mental illnesses, if not worse, considering the fact that we're the descendants of slaves that had to serve for hundreds of years in chattel slavery? How is it that the people that are the most privileged <laughs> in a society like it's almost like when you even hear that title of mental illness it almost comes across as though that is the blanket statement that is afforded to those who have the luxury of getting it with privilege right so you can't say too much about that person oh it's mental illness it couldn't just be that they hate your damn guts it couldn't be that they're crazy as hell. It couldn't be that they are living a life where they cannot rationalize why they hate you so much, but for some reason they do. So, hey, 
by virtue of your privilege, let's just slap on that mental illness blanket. I know brothers that have caught far more hell <laughs> than other communities could ever drink, theme, think of. OK, and this is not to, you know, cross compare and cross analyze. I'm just giving you all the real deal as your success strategist, a voice and a leader in our community. What we got to start doing is this. And this goes on both sides of the coin. When it comes to issues that happens in other demographics, we got to stop being so quick to just relegate it off to mental illness. At some point, we gotta just recognize that this is just how some folks are because that's how they are bred in this society. This is what their parents have taught them. This is the secret conversations that are having amongst their peers. And they may never tell it to you when you're the token Negro that's at the job, but guess what? When you find yourself having a good time, being on shine, having a cold one out at the park, <laughs> enjoying the lake, that's when it's all going to be revealed. We got to be, we got to stop being so quick to just brush off all of these acts of resistance towards us because it's like I told y'all, people keep showing you that they don't like you being here. Look at what happened in that Starbucks situation. Two brothers sitting down, just having conversations. Somehow this leads to a police arrest. And I know so many black folks that buy a damn caramel macchiato from Starbucks every single day. What threat are we posing? At what time in society have we ever posed ourselves to be the, the, the types of terrorists that have done some of, some of the heinous acts that we have witnessed from the time that this country was birthed as a nation. <laughs> if there's anybody that should be getting a pass for mental illness, it should be us given all of the trauma that we went through since we've gotten here. But to that point, I wanna talk about the fact that there are a lot of us that have gone through very traumatic experiences and opposite from a lot of these other communities that will be quick to have that mental illness title thrown on them, a lot of us are battling with a lot of major traumas mentally, spiritually, physically, and emotionally every single day. And we try to pretend that it doesn't exist. So, this is not my video to just have a rant and blame the man. This is always an opportunity for us to look within ourselves to see what things is it about us that we need to change. We've got to be able to recognize that in this world that we live where a target is always on our back, a lot of us don't really know how to cope with that constructively. A lot of us might try to assimilate into the society, pretend that it doesn't exist. A lot of us go totally off of the deep end and do all types of other crazy things out of rage and anger and spite, you know, and malice, which is not good either, right? We have to have a certain type of order about ourselves in this life. So why am I saying this? Every black person knows that when you grow up in the hood, you always got family members and friends that hate to go to the doctor. That's the last thing that they would ever do. They could be busted wide open, gushing with blood, and the last thing that they would want to do is get medical treatment. But one of the things that I would encourage you all to do is not see a therapist. I know you thought I was about to go there and talk about getting a shrink, this and that. I'm not taking it there. What I am saying is you got to recognize the fact that this society, especially as a black man in America, is stressful as hell. We are public enemy number one. And oftentimes you've got to act like you're blind to that just to be able to make it professionally. I understand what you're going through. And I went through that for many years in corporate America. That's a big reason why I decided to make the jump out. 
but you've got to have other level-headed brothers that you can talk to concerning this situation. You've got to be able to see this within yourself and you cannot just let it fester there, okay? There's a favorite passage that I like to read in the Bible. It says, surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. But it also says in other verses, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down in your wrath. So I'm saying all this to say, we at the end of the day, got to be able to look out for ourselves. If we do not help each other, nobody else will. No one on the planet is more concerned with the mental trauma and the after effects of all the things that we've gone through than ourselves, those of us that are in black America. You can't even blame other races half the time because they don't even know what it's like to go through what we go through. They don't come from that existence. So at what point are we going to start looking at these situations, the Starbucks shooting, well, not the Starbucks shooting, Starbucks arrest. Damn, I'm so quick to watching shootings. It just rolls off the tongue because that's what we see on the news. This barbecue situation in Oakland. I mean, absolutely ridiculous. It's to the point where brothers can't even grill in broad daylight without people getting offended and thinking that it's a legitimate crime for black people to enjoy the spoils of recreation. We got to look within ourselves and recognize that we've got to support each other on a much stronger level than we currently do. Because it's obvious, if you didn't figure this out during the Trump election, that there's a lot of people on this earth that don't give a damn <laughs> about what you're thinking, how you're feeling, what's going on in your world. There may be some people that, you know, may act as though they have that vested interest. And you might have some people that have a genuine concern, but we've got to be able to look out for ourselves. And that's the reason why whenever I do these Black Fridays episodes, I always promote uh, my company shirt, Talk is Cheap. Let's rebuild Black Wall Street. See, at one point in time, when our ancestors was discriminated against, hated, and oppressed, rather than us simply, you know, lobbying for us to be able to have equal rights to be able to sit in the restaurants where we will be hated and despised from business owners of other uh, ethnicities, we made a conscious decision to be able to do for ourselves, using the, in, the intellect, the creativity, and the talent that we have. It's still possible for us to do that today. We have all of the tools, we have all of the resources, but we got to be able to start releasing some of these mental shackles that are on our brains. A lot of us, we're still blind to what's happening in society, despite the fact that the signs are all around us. And that's the reason why Harriet Tubman even said during her time, I could have freed thousands of slaves. I freed, she said, in my lifetime, I freed thousands of slaves. And I could have freed a thousand more had they actually known the fact that they were slaves. Now think about that. Think about what Harriet Tubman said right there. She said, I freed thousands of slaves. And this was during a time where there was no internet. She wasn't riding around in a car. The conditions seemed a lot more grim. And it was so apparent what was happening in society at that time. She said, I freed a thousand slaves and I could have freed a thousand more had they known that they were slaves. And my oh my, isn't that true still to this day in 2018? There are a lot of black people that are starting to realize and awaken to the fact that no matter what we do, no matter how much we coon, no matter how much we put on the good boy role, we're not going to be liked by everybody. And guess what? That's okay. At least for those of us black folks uh, that are okay without the validation of every Tom, Dick, and Harry down the street, we're okay with recognizing that there's only a certain group of people that can actually get with us. And we understand that. That's all good. But what I'm trying to be able to do is I'm trying to be able to help as much as possible. 
and I could help a lot more had we known that we were slaves, okay? So be your brother's keeper and share this video. I think that there's some, some important points for us to be able to consider. Us as black Americans are being attacked on every front. We are being attacked economically. We don't control our own businesses. We are being attacked spiritually. Every time you watch another movie about, you know, the kings of Egypt, you know, uh, the passion of Christ, all of these different things, no matter what geographic location is being portrayed in these films, do you always notice how it's always one type of people that are portraying the roles of these characters in demographics of places, in geographical locations where dark-skinned people were living at the time? Have you ever noticed that? It's an attack. It's deliberate. We're attacked spiritually, economically, physically, and McDonald's in every hood, <laughs> right? You ain't got no Whole Foods in the hood. When are we ever going to get ourselves to a point where we understand that we cannot look for anybody else to fix these problems outside of ourselves? So again, this is not me looking to the next person to be able to solve my problems. This is me reaching out to my own people and saying, knowing that there's not another group in America that has known the hell that we have faced from the time that we've come here being the largest recipients of mental illness and trauma in the world, when are we going to love ourselves enough to be able to do for ourselves? Or are we going to keep sitting around, waiting, Facebook activism typing, hoping that one day somebody will just hear our cry and everything will change at the drop of a dime? If you want to get something done in life, you got to do it yourself. And I am asking everybody that's within our community to take the time to consider how much better we could be collectively if we cleaned up our community, whether that was spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally, it's up to us to do. We've been doing this thing now for thousands of years, long before we got here. So be your brother's keeper, share this video, leave me a comment, leave me a comment, and I want you to let me know two things. Number one, how do you feel that we are being attacked in society? How do you perceive the war that's being waged against us? Maybe you feel it in the academic system. You know, there's not many black professors, if you notice, um, in college, especially with tenure. You might feel like war is being waged against us economically. We are not being taught how to be black business owners. It could be in a number of ways. Whatever is specific to you, like whatever it is that you're witnessing in your personal life, I want to be able to get some insight on that. You know, even though I'm coming and doing these videos and I'm trying to be a voice of truth to my people, your experience in some ways could be different than mine. You may have a different vantage point. So leave me a comment. Let me know how you're feeling about the angles of the war that's being waged against us. But secondly, and most importantly, I want you to tell me what you plan to do constructively to be able to clean up our communities. So if you know that we're getting hit economically, does that mean that you're about to be a black business owner? Does that mean that you're going to be somebody that's going to support a black business? Does that mean that if you see that war is being waged against us with fatherless homes, are you going to take that extra step to play a mentor and father role to a fatherless child? I want you to let me know constructive ways about how you plan on cleaning up our community. I want to be able for us to show the world that we're not as big of a threat in violence as people think. We're not just this angry group of barbarians that we've been painted out to be in some of these thug movies to make us think that we don't have sense to be able to get ourselves together in a way that is legal, in a way that is professional, and in a way that's going to be able to change the world. So I want you to let me know 
what part you're going to play. And I'll see you on the next episode of Black Fridays. Take care.